Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to edit low-key grunge photos. So people who like real rough and tough grungy photos, you know, may like this tutorial. Now we're taking my ugly face from this low-key photo here, and I will be editing it to make it look like this one. So let's get in here and get started. Okay. Now, while I'm opening this into the develop module, if anybody wants to know how I took this photo and why it's took the way it is, you know, be sure to check out the description in the bottom. Okay, let's get in here and get started. Now, I've already cropped this to make it easier for us, so all we have to do is go through and do our basic edits to this. It should be fairly simple. Okay, now you know the first thing I'll have to do is go ahead and do our lens corrections. Turn that on. Now, I'm not going to bother about turning on chromatic aberration uh, correction because we are converting this to black and white. So, once that is done, we go up here. I am going to change my white balance to set as flash because flash was what I was using when I took this. And you can see it changed the way the color is in the face a little bit. Now, if anybody's wondering why it isn't completely blacked out in the background, uh, that is simple. Uh, F16 was the highest my uh, 18 to 35 art lens would go, and I was using a shoot through umbrella to get a better look across my face. Unfortunately, shoot through umbrellas inside a house spilled light everywhere. Like I said, check out the description below to uh, see how I took this. But okay, let's go ahead and get some edits and stuff going on here. Now I'm gonna change my white balance to flash, and I'm gonna go down here and I am gonna adjust my highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. Now, normally a lot of people see me, you know, drop the shadows and uh, I mean, pull up the shadows and drop the highlights. This is not the case in this type of uh, edit. So it's going to be a little bit different this time. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull up my highlights. Okay. I think I'm going to pull it up somewhere in the prior round. Uh, 28 is what I'm uh, shooting for here. Okay. Then my shadows, I'm actually going to bring that up as well. And I'm going to bring that up probably around 50. Yeah, 51 will work. Okay, and then my whites in, uh, here, I'm going to adjust it just a little bit. Make them around 11 is where I had it. And I'm going to drop my blacks even more down to around negative 20. Negative 19 will work just fine. And we see we're starting to get more separation between the background and the actual uh, my picture itself. Okay, now I'm going to go over here and drop the contrast uh, to negative 36 just to bring out some more detail around my face. Okay, now that I got that done, I'm going to really jack the clarity up and pull the clarity all the way to 100. Okay. And let's go ahead, I'm going to drop a filter on there as well. And you can hit the shift or and bring your filter down to keep it level. Grab it, pull it all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Now let's make sure our exposure isn't changed any here from the last tool I was using. But I do want to put my clarity part around plus 35 on this. And about 36 will work and click done now that we got that done now it's time to go ahead and uh, convert this over to black and white and we we'll see we're starting to look pretty good here okay now let's go down here to details uh, and before I go any further I will want to point out that I have got it set to auto for the black and white conversion it really helps adjust on the colors to make them really look the best and a color has a lot to do with way you black and white photo will actually end up looking so let's uh, use this quite often not all the times but it's there okay here we go down here let's go to sharpening we'll leave it on 25 I am going to mask out probably to around 50 to 55 somewhere in that area let's click our alt button or our option button depending on if you use a Mac or Windows keyboard and pull it over until get just all the details shows in the face we want to see if we can't get it out of the background just a little bit more. And about 66 looks pretty good. And we'll just leave it at that. Okay, noise reduction. Since this is black and white and shot ISO 100, uh, 
10 at the most. You know, no lower than five, about six will work for this. Okay. Now we're gonna have to do some post-crop vignetting. Okay. Now I'm gonna drop this down probably around negative 20, 25, 24 will work. But I am gonna feather it out just a little bit, probably around say mid 60s here. 66 works perfect, okay. Now we got the little dehaze tool down here in the bottom. Uh, for you Lightroom 6 users, you don't have this tool. But for Lightroom uh, CC users, it's down here. I wanna use it to add a little bit of you know, pep to it. Like probably around plus 10 or something. Not very much, just a little bit there, okay. Now if we get all those things done, it's time to actually make me look a little bit better. So let's go get the spot removal tool and so we can't clean up a large portion of my face here. Okay, we're gonna grab this and I have it on a uh, on heel. And I'm gonna adjust the size as I go. So I can remove a lot of you know, these blemishes, we'll call them. <laughs> okay. Rid of these blemishes. And you may have to move it around to find a better looking spot. Zoom in here. And for the most part, that will work for this tutorial. Let's see, I may have another spot over here. And that looks pretty good. You know, I'm not the most handsome person in the world, but a little spot in your healing brush can go a long ways. <laughs> now let's get a regular brush tool out here. And we're gonna accent some of the highlights in the face a little bit. Now I'm gonna do a little burning and a little pump to a little clarity up in that while I'm at it. Not too high. That'll probably work. Now you know I need to leave my flow and density on 75 each. Feather about 100. And the size I'll adjust as I go. You know, I just kind of want to darken in the brows just a little bit to help accentuate the eyes. That's all you got to do. Okay, click done on that. Let's zoom into the eyes here. As you can tell, I've been working very hard, so my eyes are a little bloodshot, but no problem, we can clear that up. Now, we want to go over here and click Auto Mask for this one. That way, we can keep it just on the white part of the eyes. And we'll click New. Actually, I'm going to click on the Find Dodge here. And Dodge is what we want to use. And let's clean this up a little bit. Just kind of painting the eyes here a little bit. Okay, now I am going to bring this up a little bit more to about 1.49. That'll be close enough. I was shooting for one and a half, 1.49 will work just fine. Okay, now we're going to click new again. Create one more new brush. Turn off auto mask. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make the pupils look a little bit better. Now, for this one, I am really going to jack the exposure up all the way to four. So it's a plus four on the exposure here. The contrast, believe it or not, I'm actually going to drop down to negative 100. And the reason that is, I want, since we've added so much clarity and stuff to this image, I really want to bring out more of the detail in the pupil of the eyes here. So I'm going to click it here. Make that look really good. Click in here. And click done. And there we go. Zoom back out. And you see that looks very, very nice. The eyes look very, very nice on this. And that's really it for you know editing a low-key grunge photo. So I hope everybody liked this tutorial. Hope everybody found it useful. You know, it's a real easy, quick way to create nice grunge of the photos, which are very nice for like um you know, men, especially older gentlemen and stuff, got a lot of, you know, 
detail to their face, I guess you could say, <laughs> a lot of, you know, miles and stuff. So, if you like this, you know, please give me a big thumbs up. Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, you know, please take time to subscribe. Subscribe is free. It's for you. and lets you know when I release more videos and stuff. And until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.